All right, this is gonna be video part two of our 8.8 .8 rear end rebuild that we're doing for my turbo Mustang. And the goal of this thing is a rear end with just some simple stuff, but able to handle around 600 horsepower, uh, 500 real horsepower-ish, thing like that. So in the last video, we completely disassembled this thing. So I'll link that video here if you wanna check that out. The video before that, we pulled it out of the car. So you've got all of that info too. Now what we're gonna do, is I need to get these upper control arm bushings out of here, and then we need to get the axle tubes welded. And then once the tubes are welded, then we can go ahead and just clean this thing up real good, clean the inside, clean the outside, and get this thing painted. Now to get these upper control arm bushings out of here, the easiest way is to use one of these tools right here which is basically uh, a way to be able to press the old bushings out. And then you can also use the same tool to press new bushings in. Now the problem I have is the kit that I bought, which is made by Dino Racing. I got it off Amazon, but it's basically a copy of Maximum Motorsports, sells the set. I mean, there's a bunch of different guys that are all making these sets. Now the tool itself seems great, seems fine. The problem is the bolts they sent ended up breaking. So. This is not the bolt they sent, but the one they did send, same deal, where it ended up stripping out the threads. And so this is actually another bolt that I ended up getting from the parts store just to see if it would work. I, I tried this one, I think this is a 3 8 bolt. I tried a bigger 7 16 by 14 bolt, same deal. And I think the bolt that they sent us was like an M10 uh, by whatever kind of thread pitch and same thing. So. <sighs> All of these are stripped out. So I, I think what's going on with my bushings is I think that on this side, just from you know being in the car for 30 years or whatever, maybe from getting over tightened too, I think that the metal on this side is slightly kind of ballooned or mushroomed, probably from being sandwiched, and that's why it's not allowing it to slide through here and push out. But all the videos I've seen online, you can usually use this type of tool, no problem, push these things out of here. I wanna say this tool was like 30 or 40 bucks. Um, so I don't know, I, I think that it's probably a good tool. I would certainly plan on probably getting another bolt like I had to do, um, but I still think this is probably worth a try. So anyway, didn't work for me. So we're gonna go to plan B, which is to basically take your drill bit. We're gonna drill through the rubber uh, on this side and basically wanna try to drill all the way around it. And then you can knock out the center section. And then with this metal part, you can take a hammer, chisel, or an air hammer like I'm gonna do, air chisel, and you just basically dent it all in until you can get this thing out. So this is the crappy way to do it. It's probably gonna take some time, but that's what we gotta do. All right, that maybe took five minutes for this side. This side was a little bit more trouble. It ended up breaking my bit, which it was a crappy bit anyway. And then my other uh, Ryobi drill ended up dying and ended up smoking and stuff. So, but uh, yeah, still pretty simple. 10 minutes probably to do it without that. If you're under the car, probably harder to drill it out because you don't have much room and stuff. But dude, if you got it out of the car, that was easy. That was way easier than I thought. I thought that was going to be a pain in the ass. All right, cool, moving on. All right, next thing I wanna do, we need to get this cleaned up really well. So we're gonna clean up both this side of the metal, this side of the metal, uh, make sure we try to get in here 
as far as we can because there is kind of a little bit of a gap where these axle tubes are just press fit in here at the factory and then they've got this rosette weld here holding it in so what we're going to do is we're going to end up going around this thing doing a full weld all the way around probably starting out in a one inch section so we'll do one inch every 90 degrees to start kind of a tack if you will and then we'll just try to fill it in i've also seen videos where guys will use a torch to heat up the cast iron side try to get it to 350 400 degrees try to maintain that temperature to help with welding this steel to the cast iron but before we get too far i'm going to go ahead and put on the uh the carrier bearing caps uh, on each side i'm just going to stick those on just that way it I don't know. I mean, we're not putting a lot of heat through this uh, center section. This is all thick cast iron, so we shouldn't have enough heat to do any kind of damage or you know move anything here, but I'm gonna put those caps on just to be safe. And then I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the cover back on just to keep any kind of welding slag and all this stuff. Try to keep it clean and keep it out of here. So let's do that real quick. So what I'm trying to do is not only clean this part of the metal and this side, but you can see where there's a ring. And so around this ring right here, it's, the metal's not cleaned up, right? So that's really what you want to get to. And then you can see there's a slight gap, like an air gap, right, between the tube and the housing. And you know, that's going to stay obviously, but what I'm doing after I'm going through with the uh, flap wheel and getting it as best as I can, I'm going through with this uh, little wire brush deal. And that's what's actually getting in there and let me get down into here. Now this side's really clean. There's not really debris or anything. Um, this side kind of had more like gunk and stuff. You can see where this one's pretty good. Um, so all the stuff's cleaned out of it, but that wire wheel did a good job. It got all the gunk out. So that way you're gonna get nice clean uh, weld. So I've still gotta go through, finish up with this. I think you can see what I mean. So when you finally got it all cleaned up, you see how all you can see around here is just an air gap, right? So all the crap that was in there, it's all gone. It's all nice and clean and it's ready to get welded. Amazon just showed up with this little uh, laser thermometer gun thing that I've been waiting on. So I wanted to have this so we can tell what the temperature of this rear end will be once we uh, get it hot enough, right? So people online were saying 350 minimum, but probably 400 degrees is about where you want to get that cast iron to. And so to heat it up, I've got my little, I don't know what you even call this thing. I use this thing outside to uh, get rid of the weeds and stuff that grow up. So if you've got a torch, you can use a torch with like a rosebud fitting on the end, um, or you can even use the cutting part, just probably have to be careful. But I, this is all I got, I don't have a torch, so we're gonna see if we can get this thing hot enough. If it doesn't hit 350, whatever it can hit, it's fine, but hopefully we can get to 400, and we're just gonna get this welded up, and uh, then we'll kind of just probably wrap like the uh, welding blanket around it and then we'll just uh, let it sit overnight. All right, guys, I got both sides uh, welded up. I'm pretty happy. Definitely not the most beautiful welds, but pretty good. So I did some practice runs before. Um, yeah, I think it's gonna be just fine. So I'm just gonna end up with the flap wheel, clean it up a little bit, and uh, then we can start getting kind of this whole rest of it just all, uh, all cleaned up, ready for paint.
like I said, certainly not the best quality. You can see where I had some good beads at certain times. For some reason, I did this side second. It turned out worse than the first side. Uh, so, not sure, but yeah, I don't know. It's gonna hold it better than it did, right? So, cool enough, I'm gonna wrap my, uh, my little fiberglass blanket around here. Supposedly that's gonna help it to kind of cool down more slowly. And we'll just let this cool down overnight and then we'll come back tomorrow, do some more prep for paint. By the way, this little dude was like $10 or something. I think it was like 13, 12 or 13 bucks with $3 shipping so I could get it here today. I ordered it this morning. So super cheap. I, I can't believe I actually, I've never had one until now. So I'm gonna use this thing, be shooting everything. Until tomorrow, little buddy. At this point, I think I'm gonna pull off this cover. Let's get the inside of this thing finished cleaning. I already kind of like pre-cleaned it, um, but we need to finish doing it, just get it completely clean. My thought is that way we can put this cover back on and then we can go ahead and finish grinding, getting this thing all ready to go for paint. That way, once it's fully painted, we're not having to you know, try to spray brake cleaner inside of here and maybe messing up the new finish. So to clean up this gasket surface, I like to use these little bristle, uh, little bristle brushes. Copper, I don't know what this is, brass. Hard to do with one hand, but they clean this crap up super quick. And it doesn't really gouge the steel because this is just brass. So these work super fast. I'm also gonna go ahead and blast off these carrier caps again, and we'll put these on for the final assembly. One other trick I wanted to show you guys is to kind of get this thing cleaned. Um, we don't want to get it sprayed. Like I've already sprayed some, uh, uh, what did I put, engine degreaser. So this is sort of already cleaned out, but then they said, okay, take some uh, paper towels and just kind of put those in the end here. And then you can just use something. I'm just using a broom handle just to kind of push that all the way through. That way it just kind of cleans, helps clean out these, uh, these axle tubes. So I'm gonna do that a couple times. So when you're cleaning this too, it might not be so apparent if you have this kind of in the car and it's harder to see, but you see how my finger can go right through here? So back up here is where the oil will splash up and then come down to, uh, to lubricate that pinion seal and uh, these races back here. So just make sure that this part of it's cleaned. You know, this one's real clean. There's really no buildup or sludge or anything like that, but just one little area to make sure you get that cleaned up real good. All right, final product inside is clean, so let's get this cover back on and then we'll start on the outside. Now I'm gonna actually take off this piece here, which on the other side is the metal part that's like the pinion snubber that will contact, uh, there's like a, a rubber snubber on the top of the car, so that way the, the axle won't actually hit the bottom of the car. Um, but I guess you can take these off. They didn't have these on Fox bodies, you won't see this thing. I think this is also some kind of like vibration dampener, but the consensus is you don't really need it. So a lot of the performance builds, you never see these things. So I'm gonna pull this thing off. Plus it's kind of hiding a lot of dirt and stuff back here that I can see. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this thing popped off. Looks like it's just uh, 14 millimeter and get it zipped up. Wow, I would, I would guess that's eight pounds, 10 pounds, it's pretty heavy. Not to mention you've got the steel part on the back side. Now this doesn't weigh much at all. So what I might actually do is this, this part might actually go back onto the car and then I just gotta get uh, some shorter bolts. Cause that way this, this is what will contact the pinion snubber. So if you don't have this, then if your rear end went up too high, your, uh, your actual housing would hit versus this metal hitting the rubber. So yeah, I'll probably pop this back on. I just gotta find some bolts that'll work.
All right, finally, we are freaking here. So I got this thing set up. Now, the ends, right, where this is, of course, we're not gonna get paint there. So I think this is gonna be how I'm gonna paint it. And then we'll have to touch this up later on, no big deal, like when it's under the car. I mean, it's just getting painted uh, black, you know? So I, I think I am gonna hit it up with some uh, Rust-Oleum primer. And then I've just got some Canyon Satin Black over here to hit it up with. So I'm going to get on a couple coats of primer. And then later tonight before I go to bed, we'll hit it up with uh, the paint. And then let it dry. Probably let it dry for the next two days. So I did the first coat of primer. Now we gotta let it wait. It's it's pretty warm in my garage. It says it's 62 degrees in here. So it says 50 to 90 degrees to be able to paint. So we're well within it. Probably give it maybe an hour. Probably go eat some dinner, come back, and then we'll throw on probably two coats of paint just to be safe. And then, like I said, with this kind of black color, I mean, you can always do touch-ups and stuff later on. Looks uh, better than it has since, you know, it rolled off the assembly line 31 years ago now. All right, first coat of black. Let's do it. All right, first coat of paint laid down, baby. It's looking good. Look at that. First coat of real paint. Yeah, we already did a coat of primer. Oh, oh, ah. oh it smells terrible. We're, we're definitely probably high. This is not, it's not good. But it's still wet, so we'll let this thing dry for one more hour, do one more coat, but it's looking awesome. Yeah, we needed to shut that door. If it got in our house, we wouldn't be sleeping. Yeah, we don't want it in the house for sure. Okay, let's roll. All right, coat number one's dry. Last coat, and we're done with paint. It looks good. It's gonna look really good with the aluminum diff cover we got on here. And then the upper and lower control arms, the spherical uh, bearings. It's gonna look sick. All right, so next morning, let me show you what we got. So this bad boy fully dried. And then what I ended up doing, I ended up taking it off our jack stands and flipped it over onto uh, under this bottom cover here so that we could paint this bottom side that was on here. So I got that all painted. I did a, you know, a coat of uh, primer and paint. So it's all good. I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry for one more day and then we can get started with reassembly. So hopefully in just a few more days, we'll have this thing fully assembled. We'll have it back in the car and we'll get you guys an update video. So watch for that. If this helped you, click that like button and we'll see you guys on the next one.